Hi, I'm Malcolm McKee, District Commissioner at Leatherhead District Scouts. Today we're going to carry on looking at skills you need for the Scouts Pioneer Activity Badge. And in this video we're going to look at the three lashings you need for most pioneering projects. As usual, we're going to carry on doing this in miniature with stuff you find around the house. So I found some bits of stick like these dialing rods and some string. You're going to need to find something, maybe some sticks from the garden, um, or some bamboo canes, or some pencils even. And for string, you might find some parcel string around the house, or even some wool. What it is doesn't matter, as long as you get the skills in your mind, so that when we get back together and we do these in big scale, you've got the knowledge. So the first lashing we're going to look at is the shear lashing. And this is a lashing you need if you want to lash two poles tightly together. And this could be for a couple of reasons. Either you're making an A-frame and you want to make the lashing at the top of the A-frame, or you're extending a, a pole and you want to lash two poles tightly together so that you can use something that reaches further. Now it really helps if you can get the pole slightly off the ground, so I'm going to employ a little help from, uh, from Bear Grylls here. I'm going to lay the poles together and get my string. So the first thing you want to do is a clove hitch. And in the clove hitch video, I showed you how to make a clove hitch by just making one loop and then another loop, putting the second loop behind the first loop and popping that over the end of the pole, like this. So what I'm going to do, having put the clove hitch on there, I'm going to work my way down the pole, just putting a series of turns around both of these. Just trying to keep it nice and tight. And that should do it. So once I've gone around about six times, I want to do what's called the frapping turns. So every lashing has two parts, the lashing part and the frapping part. And the frapping part in the shear lashing, you put the working end between the two poles and it helps to break them apart slightly. And then wrap around in the direction of the lashing. So where you can, you can just break the two poles open like this and push the, the rope through the middle and then tighten it up. And you can see as I tighten that up it really grips that lashing together. So maybe three or four frapping turns. And then I want to finish this off with another clove hitch. So at the end of my frapping turns, I can do the method of doing the clove hitch that involves making a cross on the wood. So I put it over one way, and then over the other way. And then the third time, I feed the working end underneath the middle of that cross. And pull it through. And it's important that you tie the clove hitch in the direction that you're trying to tighten the lashing. So as I put pressure on that, it's pulling the lashing together, not apart. And then we have a pretty serviceable shear lashing. Those pulls are held pretty tightly together. I can split them apart just enough to make an A-frame. If I placed another stick across the bottom there. Or if I wanted them to be tied together and put another lashing further down the pole, they would be inseparable. So just to illustrate the use of a shear lashing to extend the length of a pole or to lash two poles together as if they were one, I've retied that shear lashing at the end of an overlap between these two poles. And you can tie a second shear lashing right here, but rather than do that, I'm just going to stick a constrictor knot over that and it will hold pretty well together. 
So I covered constrictor knots in a previous video where I talked about useful knots for pioneering. And the thing to remember with the constrictor knot is to tie it around the bit of where the, uh, the pole is round like this rather than in the space between two poles like that so that it grips nice and tightly. And you can see that's good enough to just keep these two poles together and use them as if they were one. That's a pretty tight lashing now. And finally in this part about shear lashings, just to illustrate how you can then lash any sort of tool to the end of that long pole for those sorts of challenges you're doing down in the scout hut where you have to reach something over a cordoned off space. So this is a wooden spoon that, uh, that my wife doesn't know I have and if there's any clanking in the background you can probably hear her looking for it. And you can see I've lashed the two poles together and then the wooden spoon and that's, that's pretty pretty firm, pretty supportive, and I could reach over a long space. The second lashing I'm going to look at has two names. It's either called the tripod lashing or the figure of eight lashing. And it kind of does what it says on the tin. It's used to attach three poles together so that when you stand them up, they're a tripod. And again, this is easier to do if supported off the ground. So I'm going to uh, rely on Bear again to just help me tie this. It's really tempting to line up the tops of these poles where I'm going to do the lashing, but actually it's the bottoms you want to line up because you can lash it almost anywhere. So I'm going to take my bit of string and start again with a clove hitch. So much of life is, is doing clove hitches at the start of lashings. I'm just going to place this over one of these poles and you'll see now where it gets the name figure of eight because I'm just going to use this bit of rope to weave in and out like this weaving in and out backwards and forwards and when I've done maybe three or four turns around each of those again I'm going to do frapping turns and the frapping turns are done around where the figure of eights cross over so as I gather those together I'm just going to bring the working end up between the two poles and frap it around Now I'm tying this one fairly loosely. Uh, in real life you want, you're going to want to pull this a lot tighter as you're tying it. So I'm just going to hop over to do the next frapping turns. Working between the two poles. In two or three frapping turns between the poles should be sufficient. And then once again at the end, in a place that's going to tighten the lashing when you do it, you want to do another clove hitch. So I'm again going to make the cross over the bit of stick. And then on the third turn, you feed the working end through the cross and use that end to pull it tight, which pulls the lashing tight. So Bear's now done his job. And in a life-size pioneering project, um, you'd then get lots of hands on this to stand it up and then spread it out and spread the legs around so you've got a tripod. Now if you're working with really big pioneering spars um, and it would be quite difficult to stand up three of them, you can tie the tripod lashing in the middle of three spars arranged like this with two facing one way and one facing the other. And it's much easier to get people on the ends of those spars 
and to push it up from the middle like this and when that's in place to spread the legs around to form your tripod. The final of the three lashings we're going to tie is the square lashing and you use this for any situation where you want two poles lashed at right angles together or nearly at right angles together. This will be the, the bottom ends of a tripod or an A-frame and about 95% of the time you're going to be tying square lashings in pioneering. The, the shear lashings and the tripod lashings at the top are pretty rare and in a tripod for example you tie one tripod lashing and then six square lashings. So this is the one you want to learn really well. So we're going to start again um, I've got my poles just slightly off the ground, held down by Ray and Bear this time. And I'm going to do my clove hitch, which again, just two loops, which I then pass over the end, like that. And that allows me to get started. So the square lashing, I'm going to weave the working end in and out of these poles. So for the first move, I go over that pole, and then under this one and then back over that pole and under that one. So I've got one turn around the square lashing. So I'm just going to do the same again, pass it under this main pole here and over that one under that one, back over that one, and that's two turns, and you can see I'm just tightening it up now. I'm going to pass it around a third time, so under the main one, over that one, and under this one at the front, and back over that one. and give this a good tug to tighten it up. Frapping turns on the square lashing are done around between the pulls in this direction. I'm going to reverse this and come back for the first frapping turn around the middle, which I can pull tight, and then a second frapping turn, pulling it tight, and then a third one. And then I'm just going to finish this off with a clove hitch on this pole there. Make the cross and on the third time round feed the rope underneath the cross and then pull it tight in the direction of the lashing. So you can see these two poles are now lashed tightly together and will support a lot of weight. So when I was a scout I used to take part in scouting competitions and they often involve lashing things together really quickly. And there's a version of the square lashing called the Japanese square lashing that's really useful if you're, if you're in a hurry and against the clock. So I'm going to demonstrate that over here by lashing this stick to this vertical pole. And the first thing you're going to want to do is to take your rope and divide it in half and pass the loop of the rope around the standing pole. This then supports itself as I pass it over and bring both ends round, under and both ends back. As I bring it over and both ends round again, I then cross it over and do the frapping turns in opposite directions. And then I'm going to finish it off with just a simple reef knot at the top of one of those sticks. And that's the Japanese square lashing. And you can see it didn't take me very long to tie that. You can normally tie it in about 30 seconds or a minute in, uh, in real life. And so that's it for the short video where we've looked at the three lashings you're going to need for the Scout Pioneer Activity Badge. The shear lashing, 
the tripod lashing and the square lashing. Now these are really skills you can practice in miniature at home so that when we get back into the scout hut and start building large pioneering projects you've got the knowledge right there and you don't need to think about the skills. So it's time for lunch so I'd better return this wooden spoon back to the kitchen. Until next time stay safe and keep scouting. <laughs>